Okay, you guys, so I can't believe I'm saying this. It feels like a fever dream, but my electrical system is done with the exception of the solar, obviously. And like there's, okay, it's as done as it can be. <laughs> So when I say done, that's a little bit misleading. I mean done in that I can kind of leave this alone for a minute and just keep working on other projects. There are obviously still components that are gonna have to happen because I don't have all the components yet. So stuff, especially the stuff that's gonna be directly like hardwired into this, I don't have yet. Or I have it and I can't do anything with it yet because the build needs to be further along for me to do that. But for all intents and purposes, where I stand right now in the build, this is done. So now that it all exists, <laughs> I'm going to talk through how this works. Hey guys, Jen here from the much warmer future. <laughs> um, I hope it's not jarring if I intercut some of this footage of me now with what I filmed a few weeks ago. The reason I'm doing this is simply because in reviewing the footage and starting to put this video together, I realized that there were some things that I wanted to explain more in depth and be more clear with you about. So I'm just kind of coming back in to really give you a thorough picture. Yeah, the whole reason I'm even filming this is because I did a really poor job of explaining what and why I was doing when I did the installation, which is not surprising. Um, and it was just, it was too long a video to really include this. And I wanted to give it its, its due because I know that this is such a confusing thing to approach for a lot of people. Um, so I really wanted to sit down and just talk about the system. This is for the purposes of explaining the basic components of what I have chosen here. Um, I would like you to be able to understand how my system works, but the why of it is... I'm going to explain a little bit, but it's something that you're really going to have to figure out for yourself with your system. Basically, I'm sorry, but there is no way of getting around having to do your own research, at least a little bit. Um, that research, though, is 100% doable. I really, I can't, I know I've said it, but I can't say it enough times that if I can do this, you absolutely can do this. I am not a detail-oriented person, and I knew quite literally nothing about anything <laughs> coming having to do with electronics until I started researching this. This is a 200 amp hour lithium ion phosphate battery from Mighty Max. Um, it's a little bit bigger than it would have been if I got 200 amp hour batteries, but it was like $300 cheaper. So I will give up four inches of space for that. <laughs> This is the positive out coming out here. I need to tape these down, but just to protect the battery. Coming out here, it runs through this 250 amp fuse and into the master power disconnect. The master power disconnect is really important for a couple reasons. One, if I need to work on the system, that's the quickest way to cut power that is coming from the battery bank. On the negative side, I've got the two aught wire coming out into my smart shunt. So the smart shunt, what it is doing is a high tech battery monitor. It connects via Bluetooth to an app on my phone and I can see in-depth information about the battery, including temperature, including voltage, amps, etc. So then coming out of the other side of the, of the smart shunt, I have my wire that runs back into my bus bar and then I have my chassis ground. So my chassis ground, what I have done, and there are much like everything else in this entire build, like 400 different schools of thought. There are basically two schools of thought. But what I have done is this. I have this two aught wire running to a two aught three eighths inch wire lug. This wire lug is then connected to the van with a three quarter or three eighths bolt running through here and it is connected with a serrated washer. The serrated washer, when turned down to a certain torque, cuts through the paint and makes a firm connection with the actual metal of the van. So, where does the power actually come from? You know, we're not wired into a ground system. Where am I getting my power? So, first and foremost is obviously the solar. The solar comes in... Whoop, 
through the roof up here. I've got these wires coming in. Those come in through the roof flange that I installed on the roof, come down, track through, come around and here. So I have this breaker here, and that is a really unusual term to use in a DC 12 volt system or a DC 24 volt system. Usually you have fuses, fuses in a 12 volt system. A breaker is what you would have like in your breaker box in your house. So the reason for this breaker is not what you would typically anticipate a breaker doing. I'm not really worried about the amperage coming off my solar panels being that high and surging into the system because of the way that I have them wired. So when we're talking about solar power, the big debate, <laughs> it is hotly contested on the internet. I am not saying one way is right or one way is wrong. I am just gonna tell you what I have done and why, and you are welcome to do your own research. To me, this was the most logical for what I am doing but that is not to say that it is the right way for everyone. So the reason that I have decided to wire these in series versus in parallel is because it, even on days where I'm not getting peak efficiency or even days when I have maybe a little bit of shade on my panels, because when you wire them in series, it adds together the voltages, it's going to keep the voltage high. The reason that's important is because it's going to be easier than for my charge controller to feed an appropriate level of voltage into my battery system to charge it. So if you're new to understanding electricity, <laughs> like I was, um, you'll hear watts and volts and amps kind of tossed around. It seems interchangeably and it can be really confusing. I've got each of those panels is 100 watts. This is a 200 amp hour battery and it's a 12 volt system. Literally, the equation that you need to understand is that amps times volts equals watts. And wattage is kind of like a representation of the whole picture of the power. Voltage is just talking about the level of power. So a 12 volt system, it's not very much power, right? 120 volt system like you have in your house is a lot more power. And then we jump up into bigger systems. Like if you have a specialty appliance in your home, like one of those fancy stoves, I think those are on 240 volt systems because they need so much more power. And that's a whole different can of worms. So think of voltage as the level of power and then the amperage is kind of like the pressure in a hose. It's how much is moving through the wire at any given time. It's the, the rate as it were, that may be the wrong word, but it's just like a fire hose. So it's the volume of water being pushed through the line or the wire at any given time. So I'm talking about in series versus in parallel. Um, I will give you examples of both. I have run my ceiling lights in parallel while I've run the solar panels in series. And I will do a diagram here to explain what that means. Okay, so when we're talking about wiring something in series, this is a top view of my van. I have got one panel, two panels, three panels, four panels. This is the charging control center of each panel, right? So each of these panels has a positive wire and a negative wire, right? So to wire these in series, what I am doing is I am wiring the negative of this to the positive of this the negative of this to the positive of this, the negative of this to the positive, and this negative runs all the way back here and into my system. This is the negative. The positive does the same. So those are running into my system. So because these are wired like this, positive to negative, positive to negative, positive to negative, positive, um, they are getting added. Each of these panels is 20 volts and they're each 5 amps. So because I've run them in series, I add together the voltage. So that's 20 volts, 20 volts, 20 volts, 20 volts, 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4. So my total power capacity for this system is 80 volts because I have run them in series. Now, if I were to do the same thing and run them in parallel, what I would do is I would have 
my positive wire coming up just like I do now and I would run this positive to this positive to this positive to this positive and then I would have my negative wire coming in running from this negative to this negative to this negative to this negative. So for this system, we'll do it in blue. These are all still 20 volt panels. They're all still five amp panels. But because of the way we've wired them, we're gonna add up the amperage. So five amps plus five amps plus five amps plus five amps we would have a 20 amp system at 20 volts. This system is still going to be at five volts. Now, if we do the math, I've talked about how wattage equals so, same thing over here. This system is five times 80, which is 400 watts. This system is 20 times 20, which is also 400 watts. So they're the same system, just how we're getting the power delivered is a little bit different. The reason I've chosen to do a breaker instead of a switch is I want to be able to close both the circuit going to the positive and the circuit to the negative. So this switch, when I switch it off, it closes the circuit from both the positive wire and the negative wire. So then the power comes out of this breaker, comes down here and into my solar charge controller. So this solar charger is a 40 amp MPPT, which means maximum power point tracking charge controller. The old technology was called PWM. I'm sorry, at some point I looked at what that meant, but it was kind of irrelevant. Across the board, everyone agrees that this is just a lot more efficient. You're not going to lose as much power and it's going to protect your system a lot better. So this MPPT, 40 amp um, charge controller, is just what came with the system for my, my kit from Renogy. I bought the 400 watt array kit <laughs> from Renogy. And this is the charge controller that they recommend. So what the charge controller does is it takes all of that varying power that is affected by the angle of the sun and the clouds and the shadows and, you know, all kinds of stuff with the solar. It brings it in to its being <laughs> and it will then regulate that and put it back into the system in a format, for lack of a better term, that will charge the batteries most efficiently. So a 12 volt battery system usually charges at peak function at like 14.6 volts, which I know is a little counterintuitive because it's a 12 volt system, but for whatever reason, that is the most efficient charging uh, voltage for this system. So that's what this is going to do. It's gonna take all of that crazy stuff going on with my solar, bring it in here, and then put it out in a format that is most easily digestible for my system. So right now my switch is in the off position. I've got the wires coming out here into the charge controller and the charge controller you can see with the little moon, that means that it's not charging. So if I were to come over here and turn this on, I now get a little sun here and it would be charging if my battery were not totally full. <laughs> So we can see here, I've scrolled through the menu to get to what voltage I'm pulling. So this is actually pretty good. I have four panels and each of them pull, I think it's like 20.1 volts maximum. So we're operating at really good efficiency right now. I'm getting almost the full voltage from my panels. So what this charge controller is doing is taking that crazy amount of voltage and regulating it and outputting it into my battery at the most digestible voltage for my system. You guys saw me install the shore power outlet up here. 
Um, I can plug into that using a 30 amp plug, like at a campsite, like those big chunky ones that you see, if you're not familiar with RVing, they're the big circular ones um, that look like they're gonna plug in like a really cool robot or something, but really it's just RV power. It's disappointing. Um, or I can use that converter I got and switch it to a 15 amp plug, which is like a standard, well, three prong plug, plug to plug into power up here. That power runs down into, flows through the wall, down behind here, comes out and flows into my inverter. So the model that I have is the inverter slash charger. So it's doing two things. The charging part of this is going to be taking that shore power that I have plugged in, that 120 shore volt shore power, AC power, and switching it back to 12 volt DC. So it's taking that alternating current and changing it to direct current. And it's also altering the voltage so that I don't fry out my system. So the power, shore power comes in here. And then from here, these wires run, whoop, run up to the bus bars. Okay, so it's feeding power back into the system. So those are basically all of the components that I have right now of where power can come from. Um, in the future, I don't know, I still haven't decided if I'm going to do it right now. I'm going to be installing a DC to DC charger, which means that I can charge the battery bank while my engine is running using the alternator. Um, but that will also come in and be wired into the bus bars the same way. I'm not going to get into that right now because it doesn't exist. But those are the ways that power can come in. So if I'm coming in from the DC to DC bus bar, I can shut that off just by shutting off that charger. If I have shore power coming in, um, I can shut that off by turning off the inverter. It's got a power switch here. And then it also has a remote power switch that will be wired up into my wall. So if there's an emergency or I have a reason I need to shut it off without coming back here, I can do so from up front. Solar, we've talked about, I have a way to shut that out using the breaker. And then the battery bank, I can cut this source of power by turning off this switch and closing that circuit with the batteries. Those are all the ways that power can come into my system. And this is a lot of the reason that I wanted to be able to install this myself so that if something goes awry, if there's something going wrong or there's something I need to work on, I know exactly how this is wired. The other thing that this is doing is either taking the shore power or taking the power from the system and converting it into 120 volt power for my 120 volt outlets. Output comes running back into here and comes around, I'm not gonna open the door cause it's freezing, to that breaker box that I installed before with the breakers in here. And then that goes out to my other various outlets. So all of the white cording you can see is the 120 volt. So, we talked about the AC power out, the DC power out, DC, I don't know why I just said it like that, is this fuse box here. From this 12 volt bus bar, I have power coming to my fuse box. So the fuse box has got all of my various components that are either going to be direct wired in, so things like the fan, um, and the lights or things that will have like an outlet. Right now, I only have two fuses in here because those are the things that are gonna close the circuit and actually send power. I have this all wired up with all of my various um, circuits, but I only have power to two. So this one is my overhead lights and this one is my fan. So the fan I have on right now, cause it's hot. <laughs> Um, but everything else, I don't have a fuse in because I don't want power going to those circuits. So you guys saw me do the pre-wiring. If you didn't, here's the video. Um, you saw me do the pre-wiring and I decided to do the entire system with 12 gauge, 12 aug wire. The reason that I chose 12 aug, it's honestly a little bit too, well, a lot of bit too large for most of what I'm doing. 
But I really didn't want to be in a situation where I was trying to figure out, oh, okay, I need 30 feet of 12 gauge, I need 10 feet of 14 gauge, I need, you know, 50 feet of 16 gauge. I really didn't want to be messing with that. The price differential between them was negligible. <laughs> um, so I, I just went with that. So I talked about wiring my solar panels in series so that the voltages would be added together. Um, and that's a power producing item. Running that, the wiring is the same, but for a, a, a load or a power consuming item like my lights, there are other things to consider. I chose to wire my puck lights, for instance, in parallel uh, because I really didn't want them to interact like Christmas lights, right? When one light went out, all of the rest of them went out because it was interrupting the circuit because those are run in series. So to make that a little bit simpler, I'm gonna put these in a row. So here's my three lights, we'll say. I'm running just three lights. Each of those has the negative and the positive terminal. Here is my power source. And here is this wire coming up and the negative wire coming up, right? So I have then connected each of these to the positive and the negative wires. So this is a little bit more clear, I hope. So if I have my electrons coming on up this way, they have the option to both go to the light or keep going. So then I got power coming in, power keeps going up here. Same thing, it has the option to go this way or this way, all the way up. And then as the power comes back out to complete the circuit, it's coming out this way, it's coming out this way, out this way, and it keeps going. Right, so that's the circuit. So there is a circuit here, a circuit here, and a circuit here. So if this light were to go out and this power can no longer travel that circuit, it doesn't have to stop here. It can just keep going this way to these other lights and it'll keep coming back this way. I haven't closed the loop. So if I were to do the same thing, here's my battery, here's my positive and my negative. And here's my three lights. Now let's say I had decided to run these in series. I would connect this like this. So negative to positive, negative to positive, and then the negative would come all the way back down here, right? So in this instance, the power only has one way to go, right? It's coming along here. This is the only path the power has. So if this light were to go out, I've now got a wall closing off my entire circuit from the power source. So that's my electrical system for the most part. There are a few other components I need to plug in, but I feel really good. This was a project that from day one was the only thing that I was really, aside from mounting the water tank under the van, the gray water tank, um, was really the only thing that I just wasn't sure if I was going to be able to do, right? Um, I just, because I don't, didn't know anything about electrical. So to have this done is, I really don't know how to explain it, you guys, like, it's been exhausting and clearly the van is still a huge mess and there's obviously more to do with this, but having it done feels like I actually know something. Not to say that what I've done so far isn't an accomplishment, it most certainly is, but it's a different kind of thing. Like, I was very confident in my ability to just muddle through stuff that isn't this technical. Like if I jacked up the ceiling, I would just do the ceiling again. If I messed up the floor, I would just do it again or cover it up or something, you know? If I mess up building a cabinet, I'll just 
build another cabinet. <laughs> My point is, this was a skill set that I was very, very unsure of. Very unsure of. Because I knew nothing about it. I know that I am not a detail-oriented person. And this is a highly detailed project. So the idea of tackling this, it made me nervous. It made me nervous like other things in this build have not made me nervous. I've had a lot of friends for this entire project say things like, oh, I could never do that. Oh, I can't believe how handy you are. I'm not necessarily that handy, you guys. Like, I'm stubborn. <laughs> Uh, and I often try to do things for myself, but I'm also not the kind of person, like, if I feel like a project isn't going to be worth my time, if it would be cause me, if it would save me anxiety and stress and time, I am very often like, I'll just pay someone to do that. Um, it's why I've never learned to change my own oil or something. I'd happily just pay the $40 and be done. But my point is, we get told so often that there's just stuff we can't do or stuff we shouldn't do or that it's ridiculous to try. And I, that just, it makes me sad. It makes me really sad. And I know that I listen to that little voice, be it mine or others, more often than I would like in a lot more aspects of my life than I probably realize. So for me, this project was kind of like a giant fuck you to all those little voices. Again, being in my own head or elsewhere, if you just put in the time and really decide you want to do something, you can do it. That sounds so cheesy, but you really can. And this project, again, more than anything else I've done for this build, like I've certainly been very proud of other things that I've accomplished. But this one, I wasn't really sure if I could do without frying the components or hurting myself. And it's done. I can move on from this. I can move on to other stuff. Other stuff that I am certain will be challenging, but I'll just do it. So the point to all this rambling and sentimentality or whatever it is I'm doing right now is just, if there's something you want to do, just do it. Just do it. Because even if you fail at it, you still tried, right? And that's its whole own experience. And if you do do it, like, imagine that feeling. Imagine how you could feel if you did something you genuinely didn't think you could do. So just do it, you guys. Do the thing. Just do the thing. Hello world, wake me up to a 